So in this video today, guys, we're going to go over um, writing equations and how to do that. So it says, when we write an equation from a word problem, we first need to determine the variables, determine the constant, if there is one, and what type of function is being used. So we're going to start with linear equation or in inequality, okay? So our first one says, um, one cell phone company charged $35 a month for phone service plus 50 cents for each text message. How many text messages does Juan send in a month if his bill is $52? So when we start talking about this, we need to come up with some variables, okay? So <clears throat> notice that we have um, the company charges $35 a month for a phone service plus, so this is going to be 35 plus, 50 cents per text message, right? So this is going to be 0.5 times the text message, right? And then in this equation, it says how many text messages does one send in a month if this bill was $52? So that would be equal to our 52 then, right? So remember, this T is standing for what? What is our T? That's equal to text messages, right? So that's what we made that. And you can make it Y or X or whatever, some other variable, but we kind of like to do it this way, okay? So now, if to solve this, we would subtract the 35 from both sides. That gives us 0.5t is equal to 52 minus 35. So let me show you. We would subtract 35 from both sides, right? So that's going to give us 17 over here. And then um, we're going to divide both sides by 0.5, right? Divide by 0.5 here and 0.5 here. So the text message would be equal to 34, okay? So the next one, go ahead and try this next one. Come back to me when you're done. So this one says, Friendship Soccer Team purchased uniforms and equipment for a total cost of $912. The equipment costs $612. The uniforms cost $25 each. How many uniforms did the school purchase? So here again, we have um, <clears throat> the equipment cost $612. So that's $612 plus the uniforms are $25 each. So we're going to say 25 times a uniform. And the total purchase was $912, right? So here again, we're going to subtract the 612 from both sides, right? And that's going to give us 25 uniforms is equal to 300, right? And we're going to divide both sides by the 25. So the uniforms equal 12, right? 12 uniforms. 25 goes into 312 times, okay? So in this next problem, it says Keith has $500 in the savings account. At the beginning of the summer, he wants to have at least $200 at the end of the summer. He withdraws $25 per week for food, clothing, and movie tickets. How many weeks can Keith withdraw money from his account if he wants to have at least $200? So we're going to do $500. We're going to subtract from it that 25 times W, and it says that we want to have at least $200. So that means that over here... We want this to be at least 200, okay? So um, we're going to subtract the 500 from both sides. So that's going to give us minus 25W is greater than or equal to our negative 300. Now remember, when we divide or multiply by a negative number, we must flip the sign. So we're going to divide by that. So W is now going to be less than or equal to 12. Okay, because negative 25 goes into negative 300 12 times. So go ahead and do this. You try and then come back to me when you all are done. Tom is deciding whether or not he should become a member of the gym to use their basketball courts. The membership costs $135. Members pay $2 to rent out the basketball courts. Non-members can rent the court also, but they also have to pay $11 each time. How many times would Tom need to rent the court in order to be cheaper? To, for, in order for it to be cheaper to be a member than a non-member. So this one says that the membership costs 135 and then members pay $2 to rent out the basketball courts, right? So we want to go um, plus 2 times R, right? Because we're renting. $2 to rent. Non-members can rent out the court also, but they have to pay $11 each time. So this is saying how many times would Tom need to rent the court in order to be cheaper to be a member than a non-member. So we want to compare this. So if it says cheaper, we want less than or equal to, right? And then this is 11 times the R because that's what it costs for non-members. So we're going to subtract the 2R from both sides. That's going to give me 135. 
is equal to, or less than or equal to 9r, right? Divide both sides by 9. Remember, with inequalities, we, act, we treat them just like there was an equal sign, unless we're dividing or multiplying by a negative number, okay? And when we're dividing or multiplying by a negative number, that's when we're going to change the sign, okay? So this is going to be um, 15 is less than or equal to r. So if we flip this, which is the way we would typically write an answer, then r is going to be greater than or equal to r15, right? So remember, if you're going to write the variable first, you've got to flip the sign, okay? So for example 3 and 4, these are either quadratic or an exponential, okay? So the ages of, for example 3, it says the ages of three family children can be expressed as consecutive integers. So we're going to say our youngest child is going to be x, our middle child is going to be x plus 1, and our oldest child of these three is going to be x plus 2, right? Then it says the square of the ages of the youngest child, so that would be our x squared, is equal or is more, is 4 more than 8 times the age of the oldest. So the oldest would be the x plus 2, and it says it's 8 times that, so that would be 8 times it, and then it says 4 more, right? So the 4 more is going to be the plus 4, okay? So now if it asks us to solve this, then we would subtract 4 from both sides. So that would be x squared minus 4 equals 8 times x plus 2. Now let's go ahead and just uh, multiply that x times 8 times the x plus 2. So this would give us x squared minus 4 equals 8x minus, sorry, plus 16. We're going to subtract the 16 from both sides. Let's see if I can move this, y'all. Yep, I'm going to move it over here, okay? Or actually, let's just move it over here because it was our first step, okay? All right, so, <clears throat> so now we're going to move the 8x and the 16 by subtracting both of them. So we got x squared minus 8x, and if we subtract 16 from, that's going to be minus 20, right? Okay, so let's pause here a second. That's now equal to zero, so we're going to factor this and set both our factors equal to zero. So this is going to be x and x. What are the factors of negative 20 that add up to be negative 8? So we're going to do a positive 2 and a negative 10, right? That's going to give us x equals negative 2. Well, that's not an age, and x equals 10, right? So obviously we can't have an age of negative 2, so we can go ahead and cross that one out. So our first age is going to be 10, which means our second child is going to be 10 plus 1, which would be 11, and our third child is going to be 10 plus 2, which is 12. So the ages of our children are 10, 11, and 12. And this was the function that we created, okay? All right, the you try 3. Let me move this up. Um, says, Colin is building a deck on the back of his house. He has enough lumber for the deck to be 144 square feet. The length should be 10 more than its width. What is What should the dimensions of the deck be? Okay, so on this one, it says length should be 10 more than its width. So to find area, if you remember, area is equal to length times width, right? So we know that the area of the deck is 144, okay, and that's going to be equal to length. Length should be 10 feet more than its width. So the width times the width plus 10, right? That's going to be 144 is equal to w squared plus 10w. Let's go ahead and subtract that 144. So that would give us w squared plus 10w is equal to, sorry, minus 144. Wow, I keep pushing the wrong button, y'all. Uh, plus 10w minus 144. So now we're trying to find factors of 144 that add up to be, of negative 144 that add up to be um, 10. So we know one's going to be positive, one's going to be negative, right? So this can be w and w plus and minus. The bigger number is going to be positive, the smaller number is going to be negative. And so I would just start dividing by that 144 by numbers. It just so happens that it was um, 
let's see, hang on, 8 and 18. It's going to have to be, right? So plus 18 minus 8, right? So this is going to give us W equals 8, because we're going to set both these equal to 0. So W equals 8, or W equals negative 18. Again, we know that's not the answer, because it can't be negative, or width can't be negative. So, but the answer is going to be 8 and 18, right? So our width is going to be 8, and our length is going to be 8 plus 10, which is 18, okay? And that would be feet, okay? All right. So example four says, if you bought a house for $150,000 and wanted to know what it's worth in 24 years, if the growth rate was 5% a year, write the equation. So isn't this going to be our 150,000 times 1 plus 0.05 to the 24th power? So just go ahead and put that in the calculator, and you would get 483,764. Dollars and ninety-nine cents. So this was an exponential, right? Because we're taking it to a power. Same way with the next one. So let's see if you guys can do this one. Come back to me when you're done. So this one's going to be sixty-five hundred. Only this time it's going to be depreciates, right? So that means we're going to subtract. So one minus the point zero seven two one. Remember, you got to move that place two places to the left to the fifth power. And when we do this, obviously the car value is going to be less than it was originally. So this one is going to be four thousand four hundred. $71.15. Okay, so on this next one, um, it says write the system of equations for the given word problem. So Valerie wants to take her family to the zoo again. Last month, Valerie paid $41.25 for three adults and two children's tickets. So when we do this, we're going to do four adults plus two child tickets, and that's going to be equal to our 41.25, right? So that's our first equation. And then our second equation, it says this time value about five adult tickets, so five times the adults, plus four times the child's, and that's going to be equal to the 73.75. Now next week we're going to talk about how to solve this, okay? Um, but for right now, we just want to write the equations. So the next one is Paige has $7.75 to buy 12 sheets of felt and cardstock for her scrapbook. She, the felt costs 50 cents per sheet and the cardstock costs 75 cents per sheet. How many sheets of each can Paige buy? So let's talk money first. So we got the $7.75 to spend, right? $7.75. And then we've got 50 cents per cardstock. So that's equal to 0.5 times the cardstock and then 75 cents, wait, 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 the felt, sorry. Ah. So we got 50 cents times the felt plus 75 cents times the cardstock. So that's our first equation. And then it says she wants to buy 12 sheets um, of it. So we, when we add these two together, we want them to equal 12. So we want felt, so 12 is equal to the felt plus the cardstock total, right? So she wants to buy 12 sheets of felt and cardstock, okay? All right, let's see if you guys can do this. You try 5B and come back to me when you're done. So this one says Harlan has $44 to buy a pair of socks. Athletic socks cost $5 per pair. Dress socks cost eight. So we got $44 equals five times dress socks. Sorry, no, athletic socks. My bad, athletic socks, plus $8 times dress socks. And then it says he needs to buy five, seven pairs of them. So this is going to be seven is equal to what? A plus D. So there's our equations, OK? And again, we're going to learn how to solve these next week. All right, this one says write the system of inequalities for a given word problem. So this says the girls' swim team is hosting a fundraiser. They would like to raise at least $500. They are selling candles for $5, flower arrangements for 6 The girls estimated that at most they will sell 200 items. So we know this. Um, so we're going to sell at most 200 items. So we got flower arrangements um, plus our candles. Candles plus flower arrangements. They're saying that they don't expect to more, sell more than 200 items. So that's going to be less than or equal to 200, right? And then it says... They would like to raise at least $500, so we want this to be greater than, right? So whatever we earn, we want it to be greater than. So this one we're going to 
say is greater than or equal to $500 and then we're going to do our money stuff, right? So we've got five times the candle plus six times the flowers. So there's our equation. Again, we're going to talk about how to solve these next week, okay? All right. This next one says, uh, Baker is selling two types of donuts, glazed donuts G and jelly donuts J. If a customer wants to buy no more than a dozen donuts, so we know that G plus J is going to be less than or equal to 12, right? And wants to try at least one of each kind. So we know that J has got to be greater than or equal to 1, and G has got to be greater than or equal to 1, right? Um, what would be the constraints to represent how many donuts the customer? So we got G is greater than and J is greater than, and then we got G plus J is less than or equal to 12. So there we go, it was A. Wow, look at us. All right, so the next time it says, uh, the, last, the last one says, in order to prepare your summer bash, you go to the supermarket to buy hamburgers and chicken. Hamburgers cost $2 per pound, chicken costs $3 per pound, you have no more than $30 to spend. So we know that we want uh, two times a hamburger plus three times the chicken, and that's got to be less than or equal to $30, right? And then, let's see what else it says. You expect to purchase at least three pounds of hamburger. So that means we know that our hamburger is going to be greater than or equal to three. Right? So there's our equations.